One of the most exciting stories of our time is being written on the sports pages of our newspapers. Since 1941, nearly every record on the books has been broken. Even our high school athletes of today are turning in performances which equal or better yesterday's college and Olympic marks. And coaches and athletic directors agree that better nutrition is an important part of this exciting story. Medical records since 19 centuries over dread diseases and health problems which have plagued mankind for centuries. Here, too, improved nutrition plays an important part. But we don't have to follow or read medical records to find the benefits of improved nutrition. For we are reaping those benefits every day of our lives. Each member of today's family is living a richer, happier life. And better nutrition plays its part in helping us enjoy life to the fullest by helping us to enjoy better health. Better nutrition begins with an abundance of wholesome foods. Foods combined so that each meal gives us the balanced variety we need for proper nourishment. Bread has always been one of the most important of these foods. And since the introduction of enriched bread in 1941, our staff of life has become even more important to our diet. In fact, authorities agree that the enrichment of bread has been a major factor in the greater vigor of our young people, in the conquering of nutritional diseases, and in the improvement of health since 1941. Enriched bread is good white bread made better by the addition of iron to help build red blood, plus three B vitamins, thiamine for sound nerves and good appetite, niacin for normal tissues, and riboflavin for growth and healthy skin. Medical and nutritional authorities agree on the contribution which enrichment has made to our health. Here speaking for those authorities is Dr. W. W. Bauer, Director of Health Education for the American Medical Association. Recent years have seen a remarkable improvement in the nutritional health of America. Much of this improvement has been credited to the enrichment of white bread, that tasty, beautifully textured bread on every table in America at every meal. Before this enrichment, nutritional deficiencies were widespread among our people. Today, physicians do not see them anymore. We owe a real debt to the baking industry, which has made this improvement possible, and all without any additional cost to the public. Best of all, bread is a delicious food. Its flavor blends perfectly with other foods, adding zest and enjoyment to any meal. And bread is an abundant food. Today's modern high production baking methods provide us all with a never-ending supply of this vital food at a very moderate cost. As it has for generations, the baker's day begins while the rest of us are still snug and warm in our beds. To the bakery come giant freight cars loaded with their precious cargoes of snowy flour. The flour is transferred to the bakery's pantry, the ingredient room. Here it is stored in... Flour, of course, is only one of the ingredients which go into today's enriched bread. Also included is creamy shortening, non-fat dry milk, salt, sugar, yeast, and enrichment wafers. Each of these wafers is a concentrated combination of iron and three B vitamins. Just eight of these wafers supply the necessary enrichment for 1,000 loaves of bread. Now, let's watch as these ingredients are combined and processed in a modern bakery to produce our daily bread. The first step is the sifting and blending of just the right amounts of different types of flour, each adding its own qualities to the finished blend. The blended flour moves through pneumatic tubes to storage in the hoppers on the mixing machines. Each of these measuring cups holds just enough flour for one batch of bread. For this first mix, the flour is combined with filtered water, yeast, and a solution of dissolved enrichment wafers.
The result of the first mix is a soft, springy mass called the sponge. The sponge is flipped into a large trough, or trough as the bakers call it. The trough is wheeled to the fermentation area. Here the air is kept constantly warm and moist. The yeast in the sponge begins to work, filling the sponge with millions of tiny bubbles and it rises to the top of the trough. The sponge is then returned to another mixing machine for the second mix. Milk solids, sugar, salt, shortening, and more flour and water are added and mixed with the sponge. The product of this second mixing process is the actual bread dough. The dough goes to the fermentation area for another rest period. Again, the yeast begins to work and the dough rises to the top of the trough. Then the entire batch of risen dough goes to the divider. The divider accurately separates the dough into equal portions. Each of these pieces will eventually become a loaf of bread. From the divider, the pieces of dough move on to the next step, a roller coaster ride on the rounder. This interesting machine rolls the dough into identical balls. The plump dough balls are then off for a trip through an overhead tunnel called the proofer. Inside the proofer, the dough rises again in the warm, moist air. The dough emerges from the proofer and passes through the molder. The molder flattens the dough balls into pancake shape breaking up any large bubbles to assure a smooth, even texture in the finished loaf. Then, the final shaping process as the dough pancakes are rolled into cylinders. Dropped into pans, and sent for another slow trip through the final proofer. Each pan of dough emerges from the final proofing plump, rounded, and ready for the oven. Like our ovens at home, the baker's oven is controlled by thermostats to maintain an even baking temperature. However, the baker's oven is called a traveling oven. The pans of dough move through it, baking as they go. This one is 110 feet long and produces 4,800 loaves of bread per hour. At the end of their leisurely journey, the fresh golden loaves emerge from the oven and are flipped from their pans. Each loaf is slowly cooled to room temperature. The final step is slicing and wrapping to seal in the oven fresh goodness and flavor of each loaf. Then onto the bakery trucks for quick delivery to our stores and homes. But as the cycle continues, for the making of bread is a never-ending job. But the proof of the loaf is in the eating. Who can resist the tempting goodness of fresh baked bread? By itself or combined with other wholesome foods and tasty sandwiches, bread adds enjoyment to any meal. And American bakers produce a wide variety of breads to provide us with an interesting change of pace in our daily menus delicately flavored table rolls, and the all-American favorites, hot dog rolls and hamburger buns. Tangy, robust rye breads. French and Vienna bread with their golden crust and melt-in-your-mouth centers. Whole wheat or cracked wheat bread with its hearty, nut-like flavor. Raisin bread, sprinkled through and through with tender nuggets of tasty goodness. 
Yes, our daily bread is available to all of us in abundant variety. And no diet is truly complete without this basic food. Only six slices of enriched bread a day make a very important contribution to our daily food needs, supplying important percentages of protein, calcium, iron, thiamine, niacin, riboflavin, and essential calories for energy. Today's enriched bread takes its rightful place along with the other foods we should include in our daily diet. Green and yellow vegetables, meat, poultry, fish, eggs, dried peas, dried beans, and nuts, potatoes and other vegetables and fruits, milk and milk products, oranges, tomatoes, grapefruit, and other vitamin C rich foods. balanced variety of our six basic foods, including six to eight bread a day, we are able to play our part in the most exciting story of the time, the story of a fuller, happier, richer life all of us. Remember, enriched bread enriches health.